Hi guys, it's Lindy. And it's Mike. And we're T-I-Y. <laughs> we're the Tiny It Yourself channel and today we're going to be talking about how we are building scaffolding. DIY scaffolding. Our tiny house is 13 and a half feet tall at the highest point and so we need to be able to get up there and do all the sheathing and all of the details and we just can't do that with a ladder. It's too dangerous. Now while we could have gone the route of renting scaffolding, it's a little bit more of a hassle at least for us because we would have had to cart it back and forth, you know, build it up, take it down, and then the gas to bring it back and forth, all that, which we just weren't into. So instead we decided to build our scaffolding out of all reclaimed wood. So thanks for all the wood, Dion. This is how tall I really am. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. All right, so we have 10 of these 10 foot long two by fours, which are pretty grody, but they'll do the job. And also most of a four by eight, three quarter inch piece of plywood that will be the top. So we got what we need, let's get started. Woo. Let's get to work. All right, so here is a rough sketch of our scaffolding. It's gonna be that same 38 by 75 sheet of plywood on top the 10 foot posts on each side and one end is going to have a ladder on it so we can climb it. And the three other ends are just gonna have X braces for safety. Okay, so as is the case with most reclaimed wood, it's a little uneven. So in order to compensate for that, we are going to measure them all out to the same length, which happens to be 120 inches, and then cut the excess off with this handy dandy Japanese saw. Also, if you're not ridiculous like us, you could just use a power tool to cut it. But since we're extreme and want to build some muscle, we're using the Japanese saw. I can't, my shoulder's seizing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I need to build muscle. <laughs> yeah! Thankfully, we were also able to scavenge this piece of three-quarter inch plywood. It is 38 by 75, so it's going to work out perfectly as the top of our scaffolding. It's in really nice condition, as you can see. All right, so we're just going to lay this thing on its side and build it on the ground, and our first step is going to be cutting those little ladder pieces. We're going to do four of them. They're going to be kind of far apart, but it'll work, and we're just taking that 38-inch width, subtracting the one and a half inches on each side, which is 35, so we're gonna cut four 35 inch boards. So we'll be using these two and a half inch screws that we basically have lying around to adhere the top of the scaffolding to the four posts. Yep. Alright, so this is our finished product. As you can see, we made some changes from the original drawing. We had two X's on the original, but because of uh, quantity supply issues, now we only have one X. And on the side, you can see that in the original drawing, we had an X, but since the scaffolding is so tall and thin, we just decided to do the two angled pieces, and they seemed like a much better fit. So we just did two screws per joint so we didn't use too many screws and then on our ladder we went ahead and put the pieces two feet apart which is going to be a bit of a step up but it's how much wood we had. All right let's see if this thing can stand up. This could be kind of risky but we're going to do it. All right so the ground's a little uneven so you can see it's leaning and Putting blocks under it might be a solution, but we just have to brace it up more. It's just a little too sketchy. All right, so as you can see, I just climbed on it and it was pretty rickety. So what yeah. do you think? What lessons do we learn? Um, always use more wood, more braces. Yeah, we need to go back and get some more wood and just make it stronger. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's gonna be fine. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hey guys, as you can see, uh, our scaffolding design has changed a little bit since the last time you've seen it. We actually ended up adding four 2x4s. So we have these outside triangle pieces right here and those were to help widen the base. They also are adjustable because you can't tell but the ground there is a little uneven so we can kind of move those up and down to help with stabilization. We also added one last two by four up here on the scaffolding platform, just because when there's people on it, especially if there's two people, it starts to bow in. So it just creates more even weight distribution. So yeah, even though it's a little bit more 
Ghetto Fabulous. It's a lot more safe and sturdy, as you can see, as Mikey climbs it now. <laughs> Since the stairs will take a lot of wear and tear from us going up and down, we decided to add these blocks to kind of relieve some of the tension that will be put on these side screws. So that way if there's a lot of pressure on it, these blocks kind of help to keep it secure. Okay, so we're super happy we went with this route. This way we didn't have to spend a bunch of money, rent something, worry about breaking it, getting it here, bringing it back. And it's yeah. all reclaimed except for those four two by fours which cost us like 15 bucks or something like that. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, the only price is our lives if anything goes <laughs> if wrong. If anything goes wrong. We also put a yoga mat on top, so it's really nice on your knees. You could probably even do some yoga with the birds up there. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I hope you really like this one. Feel free to like and subscribe. Yeah, and check out our Instagram if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye. Bye.